Hey everyone, uh, this is Mr. Beckstrom, and uh, looking at section 2.5, this is limits at infinity. Uh, we've already taken a look in section 2.4, how if we get uh, a limit of positive infinity or negative infinity for one-sided or two-sided limits, we have uh, a vertical asymptote. And uh, now we're going to take a look at how we can use the idea of limits with infinity to get horizontal asymptotes. So here's the definition. Uh, it says if f of x becomes arbitrarily close to a finite number, L, finite means not infinite, for all sufficiently large and positive x, then we write the limit as x approaches positive infinity of f of x is equal to L. So in the last case with the vertical asymptotes, we had the plus and minus infinity uh, where the limit goes. And now we're going to, for the horizontal asymptotes, we're going to have plus or minus infinity where the A goes. So that's, that's a pretty clear distinction here. Uh, we say the limit of f of x as x approaches infinity is L. In this case, the line y equals L is a horizontal asymptote of f. Uh, the limit at negative infinity uh, is defined uh, the same basically as in the case of the horizontal asymptote. So uh, it works for x approaching positive infinity or x approaching negative infinity. If we get some constant, um, then we'll have a horizontal asymptote there. So let's let's take a look at an example. So um, go ahead, and I know it is not super clear, but this is the limit as x approaches negative infinity of uh, x to the negative 11th. So uh, what do we do here? Well, well basically we're going to put in values um, that get uh, smaller and smaller. Basically they grow in magnitude but are negative. And we're going to see what happens to the, the limit here. So go ahead, pause it, try this one, and then we'll work through the solution. Alright, um, so for this one um, I mean, really, you could uh, do this without using your calculator, but I'm going to do it both ways here. So first, without using my calculator, uh, I'm going to look at the function here. So um, x to the negative 11th by uh, exponent rules is really just equal to 1 over x to the positive 11th. Right? Now, as we put larger and larger negative numbers in here, um, what's going to happen here? Well, notice that this exponent here, 11, is odd. And when we have a variable to an odd exponent, when we put in negative values, um, we're going to get negative numbers. If we had an even exponent, we would, if we put in negative values, we'd, we'd get positive numbers. But odd, for example, negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 8. Um, and it works for all exponents to odd powers. So when I put in a really large magnitude negative value in there, I'm going to get a really large value on the bottom of this uh, fraction here. And that's going to be 1 over a really large negative value, which is going to give me something that's going to be getting closer and closer to 0. So I can already tell you just by kind of looking at it that this thing is going to equal 0, which means that if I have a uh, graph here, that I will have a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 0. And that means that somehow, either from the top or the bottom or both, um, this function will approach that horizontal asymptote. Um, now, this is not this function. I'm going to actually look it up, but uh, it just get, kind of gives you an idea of it. So uh, let's actually take a look at it and do it in the calculator as well. So... What I want to do is I want to go to y equals, clear out that last problem, and we're going to put in x raised to the negative, remember don't use the minus sign, I use the negative, 11, hit enter, and uh, then make sure that in table set, uh, my independent variable is on ask, my dependent is on auto, you do second window for that, and then second graph, which is table. Uh, let's clear out these old ones here, and we're just going to start putting in 
Remember, this is approaching, x is approaching negative infinity. So let's just start putting in uh, negative numbers that are higher and higher. So uh, negative 100. And as you can see, this e to the negative 22 means that we're actually moving the decimal place from negative 1, 22 places to the left. So this is going to be point. 0, 0, there's going to be 21 zeros, and it's going to be a negative point zero 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 twenty one zeros one, uh, And that is a value that is super duper duper close to zero. So we can kind of see it through there. Now let's take a look at the graph. Uh, so here's the graph, and I'm going to actually get a little, do a zoom box on here. So uh, I can uh, see this just a little bit better here. Let's kind of go from right here so you do one corner of the box and then you I hate when you hold it down it goes way too far but and we'll go like that take a look and see what it looks like and as you can see uh, from the left here it's approaching that uh, y equals zero horizontal asymptote and from the right here it's also approaching that uh, y equals zero uh, horizontal asymptote all right, uh, let's go to the next one. All right, so uh, theorem 2.6 uh, gives us some certain limits at infinities and powers and polynomials. Uh, so here's some general rules um, that concern positive integers n and polynomials p. Uh, remember, a polynomial is uh, it's some type of equation that has all real coefficients and then x or variables to um, powers, uh, positive uh, whole number powers. So uh, this is kind of an example of one. A quadratic would be an example of one, like a parabola, like x squared minus 2x plus 3. But uh, you can go as large of a power as you want, all the way up until you know positive infinity. Um, so anything that is in that form there would be considered a polynomial. Um, so first thing says that the limit as x approaches either positive or negative infinity of any x raised to the n, remember n is a positive integer, is equal to infinity. And the, the first one, uh, a little bit different from the last one we did because here the exponent is even. So whether we take a odd number, or excuse me, whether we take a positive number or a negative number, if we take that number to an even exponent, we're always going to get a positive answer. So that's why it always approaches positive infinity. Now, if n is odd, like the last example that we did, if we're approaching negative infinity, um, then our limit is negative infinity. And if we're approaching positive infinity, then our limit is positive infinity. And that's just because uh, you take any uh, value raised or a negative value raised to a odd number and you're going to get a negative number so it's going to get closer and closer to negative infinity. All right uh, the limit as x approaches either positive infinity or negative infinity to 1 over um, the variable raised to the n power. Remember this always gets larger either um, either towards positive infinity or negative infinity, so this thing will always approach zero. And really, this works for any constant up here. So it doesn't have to be one. It can be two or four or 100 or pi, any constant up here. Uh, if you have the variable down here and you, and you let the x approach infinity, uh, you're going to get one here. Um, and uh, this kind of says the same thing here. This is similar to the last example that we did. And then the other thing, or the last one here, is that if we have a polynomial, as x approaches either positive or negative infinity, that that's equal to the limit of uh, x to the n times a sub n, which is also plus or minus infinity, depending on the degree of the polynomial and the sign of the leading coefficient. Uh, so w what does that mean? Uh, well, let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, what this means is that the first, if, if you order a polynomial uh, 
from the highest degree to the lowest degree, that first term is going to be the one that really affects that polynomial the most. And, and let's, well, we're going to take a look at an example in just a second here. Uh, but it says that we really only care about the first term, basically the term that has the highest exponent uh, in that polynomial uh, for what it's going to do when we let x approach positive or negative infinity. And, uh, and then we can kind of use these prior rules to kind of help us do that. And uh, that's what we're going to take a look at an example of now. So here we have the limit as x approaches negative infinity of negative 3x to the 16th plus 2. So go ahead, um, try that out using uh, these rules up here, and then unpause it when you're ready for the solution. All right, um, so according to number four here, uh, we only care about this term that has the highest exponent in it. So we don't care about this two at all. And if it had like 5x to the 15th or x to the 14th, we wouldn't care about any of those terms there. We only care about the term with the highest degree. So this is really equal to, according to that, the limit as x approaches negative infinity of just that first term there. So the negative 3x to the 16th. Now, why is that? Um, that's going to be because as we continuously put larger or smaller numbers into x, um, it's only going to be the variable with the highest degree that is going to matter in the end because it's going to be growing exponentially faster than all of our other terms. And eventually, as we approach infinity or negative infinity, um, it's going to so far outpace the rest of the are smaller uh, exponents that it's going to be the only one that matters. That's why we, we can ignore the rest of those. Um, so here, um, I have the limit as x approaches negative infinity. So if I start putting some really large values into x here, really large negative values or really small values, like negative 100 or negative 1,000, remember I'm raising that to an even power. And up here it says, if I'm raising it to an even power, then this thing without the negative 3 is going to be approaching positive infinity. And then we multiply by a negative number, and that's going to turn all of our values negative. So this thing is going to be approaching negative infinity. Negative infinity. And this, this is how we, we solve one of those uh, polynomials. Uh, with uh, x approaching positive or negative infinity. And to check that, to just kind of verify that with, with our own peace of mind here, um, let's pull out the calculator again. And let's go over here, and I'm going to do negative 3x to the 16th power, to the 16th power, plus 2, plus 2. And then I'm going to start putting... Go to my table here. Oops. Uh, really, come on. Go to my table here. And we're going to start putting in, remember, we're approaching negative infinity. So let's negative 10, uh, negative 100, negative 1,000. And remember, this e to the positive 48 means that we have to move that uh, decimal place 48 places to the right. So this is a huge number. It's negative 3 with 48 zeros behind it. So that is definitely approaching negative infinity. And let's go ahead and graph that as well. See if we can fit it on. Oh, let's go to the standard graph and see what that looks like. Uh, it's not showing up on my... Things frozen. All right, so my calculator crashed on me, um, but this is this is what I got right here. And as you can see, as x approaches negative infinity, we're going out this way. Notice this function is going straight down, so the y values are approaching negative infinity as well. So we can see that visually too. 
All right, um, let's go ahead and go to the next part. All right, uh, theorem 2.7 um, talks about the end behavior and asymptotes of rational functions. And that's where our function can be written as a polynomial divided by a polynomial. Uh, and that is a rational function there where um, our first coefficient um, is not equal to zero and our uh, first coefficient there is not equal to zero. So a sub m, if you look over here, is going to be the coefficient of the first term of our p of x, and uh, b sub n will be the first coefficient of our first term of q of x. And uh, I'm not going to go ahead and read all of these, but you can go ahead and pause the video and take a look at all these and, and try to see um, if you can kind of understand what they're saying. But um, really, um, take a minute, and then we'll go over it a little bit, and I'll explain it slightly different than what it says here, and then we'll try some exercises. Okay, so this one says that um, if m is less than n, if m is less than n, and what does that mean? That means the highest coefficient on the top is less than the highest coefficient. Not not coefficient, I'm sorry, exponent. If the highest exponent on the top is less than the highest exponent on the bottom, um, then we have a horizontal asymptote, but y is equal to zero. If the highest exponents on the top and the bottom are both the same, um, then we can find the horizontal asymptote by taking the, the coefficient on the top and dividing it by the coefficient on the bottom. If the exponent on the top is higher than the exponent on the bottom, um, then we don't have any horizontal asymptote. And then it says if m is equal to n plus 1, then the limit as x approaches positive negative infinity of f of x is equal to uh, positive infinity or negative infinity. Uh, F has no horizontal asymptotes, but it does have a slant asymptote. And what that means that if uh, m here is equal to n plus 1, uh, so that means if the top exponent is exactly one higher than the bottom exponent, uh, we don't have a horizontal asymptote, but we have a slant asymptote. And that's also called an oblique asymptote for those of you that took the pre-calculus. Um, and then assuming the f of x is reduced in reduced form, p and q share no common factors. Vertical asymptotes occur at the zeros of q. Um, so that means that if we can't reduce this anymore, then wherever the zeros occur in the bottom polynomial, that's where we're going to have vertical asymptotes. All right, so let's take a look at um, an example of each one of these and see how it works. All right, um, so the first one, it says if m is less than n, so that means let's say we have the function y is equal to um, 3x squared plus 2 all over negative 5x cubed. So the, the top exponent is less than the highest bottom exponent. So the highest top exponent is less than the highest bottom exponent. That means that as we let uh, x approach either positive infinity or negative infinity, the bottom is going to grow faster than the top. Um, therefore, uh, think about if you have a constant on the top, and something getting larger and larger on the bottom, um, we will be approaching uh, zero. Uh, another way to look at this is I'm going to go ahead and divide each one of these uh, by x squared. So each term I'm going to divide by x squared. So that's going to give me 3 plus 2 over x squared all over negative 5x. So all I did was just divide every value here by x squared. And then you can see that uh, this thing, as x gets larger and larger and larger, definitely approaches 0. Um, and so we're going to end up having just 3 
on the top as x gets approaches positive and negative infinity and on the bottom this will just keep growing and growing and growing so, so it's just really a constant over something that's getting either continuously larger or continuously smaller all right uh, let's take a look at an example of the second one so let's say I have a negative 3 x cubed plus 5 x minus 2 all over um, 10 x cubed minus 5 x squared. Let's say I had something like this. Uh, notice that the highest exponent on the top and the highest exponent on the bottom are the same. So all we really care about is these first terms. We can ignore the rest of them. So uh, the, when we're talking about the limit, and remember, I'm not putting all the limit notation, but uh, assume that I am. Um, the limit as x approaches uh, infinity, we'll do positive infinity here, of negative 3x cubed over 10x cubed. These will cancel out, and all we're really left with is the coefficients. So this is going to be equal to negative 3 over 10. Negative 3 over 10. And it's the same thing if we're approaching negative infinity as well. We get the same value there. Um, all right. So y equals negative 3 over 2 is a horizontal asymptote here. Hey, let's take a look at uh, an example of the next one here. So this next one is if m is greater than n, that means the top is larger than the bottom. So this is, for example, if we have the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 5x squared plus 1 over 2x. So in this problem here, notice that the uh, exponent on the highest exponent on the top is greater than the highest exponent on the bottom, and uh, this means that the top is growing faster than the bottom. And similarly, like we did the last example, if we divided everything by x, so that would be five x plus one over x, all over two. Um, we would see that this is going to stay still while this value here gets either larger or smaller. So this thing is going to approach either positive or negative infinity, meaning that we have no horizontal asymptote. All right. Now, um, also notice that this one here is in the form of D. That means the top exponent is exactly one higher than the bottom exponent. So what we can do here is we can do um, long division. So we see how, how many times does 2x go into 5x squared, 5x squared plus 1. And uh, whatever the answer is, and we could ignore the remainder, uh, but whatever the answer is, is going to give us a um, an oblique asymptote squared. That would be uh, 5 over 2x, because 5 over 2x times 2x would give us the 5x squared. Subtract this, you get 0, bring down the plus 1, and then you would just get a remainder here. So y equals 5 over 2x would be the oblique or slant asymptote uh, of this limit here. All right, um, let's check some other stuff. And the last theorem that we're going to take a look at is theorem 2.8, and this is the end behavior of our e to the x, e to the negative x, and natural log of x. And uh, so the end behavior for e to the x and e to the negative x on the interval from negative infinity to positive infinity and natu natural log of x on the interval from 0 to positive infinity is given by the following limits. So if you have any of these forms here, 
here are the uh, limits and you can take a look at that it's also on page 99 uh, so for example if we were to look at the function I'll write this one out function and I'm going to do an example directly from the book here just so you can kind of go over that as well this is example six and it says 4 minus natural log of 3x. All right, and what it wants us to do is determine the end behavior of the following functions. So go ahead, see if you can do that without uh, looking at anything, and pause the video, and then come back and we'll go over the solution. All right, um, so with the theorem 2.8 here, um, we know that the limit as x approaches positive infinity remember we're looking for end behavior um, so this is of natural log of x is equal to positive infinity now we have natural log of 3x so the first thing that i really need to do is go ahead and use some logarithm laws to rewrite that so this is going to be natural log of 3 plus natural log of x just like this um, and just a moment here, this is going to be equal to, if we distribute that negative, 4 minus natural log of 3 minus natural log of x. So this is really what we're taking the limit of, or I mean we're taking the limit of both, but in this form here we can actually use uh, this here for 0 and for infinity. So if we now up a little bit here give myself some room now if i look at the the limit as x approaches positive infinity of this function f of x of this function f of x well this is going to be equal to we're going to have four minus the natural log of three both of these are constants and then this here is going to be well if we put, if we put in infinity for x we know that as x approaches infinity the natural log of x approaches infinity and then we're going to multiply that by a minus um, so this thing is going to actually approach negative infinity so we have a constant minus negative infinity so that's going to give us negative infinity there um, now as it approaches zero from the right hand side uh, we're going to have the same two first things here. And then uh, from the right, it approaches negative infinity, which means that uh, you're going to multiply that negative infinity by a negative. That means it will be approaching positive infinity. All right, guys. Um, that's it for now. Please work through some of the examples. I know some of it's a little bit confusing. Uh, I much rather teach this in class where people can ask questions while I'm going through it, but uh, please ask questions in the forums, and I hope you all have a great week. Thanks.